Welcome to Backstage with Becca B with special guest Adante Carter. Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of Backstage with Becca B. On this episode, after discovering his passion for theater, this South Dakota native decided to move to Los Angeles where he went to AMDA, the American Musical and Dramatic Academy, to further his career in theater. After moving to LA, he was cast in Carrie the Musical, which eventually led to more in the LA theater community. He since moved to New York and is part of Mean Girls the Musical, first national tour cast as Aaron Samuels. Please welcome Adante Carter. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing really good. I'm sure you're missing live theater and missing being out on the road. You had just got started going on tour with Mean Girls when like all this started. I mean, you'd been on tour for how many months before? It was about like six months, I'd say. Um, so we were nearing that halfway mark and then just the world shut down as we know it. <laughs> oh, right when you all were getting used to it. I know, just getting into the swing of the show. I mean, it, it's always interesting to see like the difference from when we first started to, you know, where we were six months in, just the level of comfortability and just how, um, I guess, tight the show was, I felt. <laughs> yeah, and it was probably it was probably changing and continuing to change every night, depending on like, everyone was probably getting more comfortable and more like comfortable at ad-libbing and stuff because Mean Girls is a fun show. So I feel like there's always, like improv going on probably yeah i feel like not necessarily in the lines but more so maybe in our intentions or as like what we're you know the way we may deliver it or something or on stage non-spoken moments <laughs> yes, exactly well i'm definitely gonna get back into mean girls later cool. but i want to start with have you always known that you wanted to be a theater performer and like be on stage and entertain for a living i uh, truly i think that's the only answer I can say, which is yes. <laughs> um, at one point I wanted to be a dentist or a vet, but did I really want to become a dentist or a vet when theater was in the back of my mind the whole time? So I think it was always there for sure. Uh, at a young age, I just threw myself into as many performing opportunities as I could. And I think that stuck with me. And I was like, hey, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> What, I'm curious because dentist and vet sounds very random compared to theater. It's like a completely different spectrum of a job. So how did, yeah. like, why was that a thing? <laughs> well, you know, there's also that the pressure you're in high school and you're like, oh, what should I do with my life? You know, my parents say I should do this. My teachers say I should do this. Performing is not a real career, which it totally is. And people that say otherwise need to do some serious research. Um, but I think there was a lot of that pressure to want to do something quote unquote productive, which is looking back in retrospect, uh, it's not the case at all. And I don't think I would have been as happy as I am now kind of following what I feel like I was intended to do. <laughs> I mean, working with animals would be a cool job, but like, yeah. So, I love I love animals. I love dogs. I love cats. I love I, I, I'm going to confess. I don't really love snakes, but um, everything else I, I'm cool with. <laughs> I mean, I don't know many people who do love snakes. I know there's some like people who are probably like obsessed with snakes. Do you like snakes? <laughs> no, no. OK, I, you know, cool. We'll go along great. <laughs> I watched Madeline one time when I was little and there's like a scary snake scene where like the where like the snake like eats the moss and I'm like, nope. Nope, yeah, nope. even Harry Potter, I'm like, nope, nope, can't do it. <laughs> and I thought I was brave watching that movie when the snake came around because I was like, I'm not going to be scared of the snake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chamber of Secrets, forget about it. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you are from South Dakota, I read. Yes. And you moved to Los Angeles. What brought you to Los Angeles? Um. Ultimately, I, I wanted to live out there just because I'll tell you why I wanted to live out there specifically. Um, my senior year of high school, um, I got out of my car, I had all my college acceptance letters, I was like, where am I going to go? I don't know what to do. And it was like negative 27 that day. And I went down to the performing arts wing of the school and I slipped on some black ice, which is like invisible ice if you're from somewhere cold. I slipped on it and I said, yep, I'm going to Los Angeles. So I ultimately went there for 
college. I wanted to live there also besides college. So I thought it's just a really good fit for me to go there, do my studies, be somewhere warm, be somewhere different. And I do not regret that decision at all. You transitioned from somewhere with weather and seasons to somewhere mm -hmm. that doesn't have like any seasons at all. No, no, no. And, it, and I and I love that. It's gorgeous. You might get a little fall, a little fall, just a little bit. And then and then it's done. Are, are you from California? Or do you live in that area? Or I've lived well, I was living in California since 2015. Right now I'm currently in Dallas because of everything going on. But awesome. Awesome. I well, know those are two relatively warm places minus the cold weather that you uh, <laughs> Texas had like a month ago or something. I hope you were okay. <laughs> I loved it. I love cold weather. Oh. I love seasons. So I mean, I don't know how I survived in Los Angeles, but like you can go up to the mountains if you want seasons, I guess. Yeah, it's all there. Desert, mountains, ocean, uh, city life. It's all there. <laughs> exactly. So you went to AMDA, which I've heard fantastic things about it. I was working at Pantages pre everything happening. Oh, and a awesome. lot of the Pantages ushers were going to AMDA and studying at AMDA and mm -hmm. nothing but great things were said. Why did you choose to go there? And like, how do you think that that helped your career and helped further your career? Yeah, so I had seen that poster in my choir room. It's like AMDA, American Musical Dramatic Academy. Oh, this sounds really cool. I looked into it. I saw that it was just like an acting music and dance school, which is like, this is perfect. This is what I want to do. And I really wanted more of that conservatory style training where I didn't have to take gen ed classes like physics and calculus, things that I necessarily didn't think I was going to need in my career. I mean, I do physics in Mean Girls, right? And <laughs> math class in AP, AP Calc. So I guess I really needed it. <laughs> no, but I, I wanted to go somewhere where I'd be performing right away. And AMDA, I felt really tailored to that. And also the teachers there were amazing and they were all working in the industry currently. And that really drew me to the school. So ultimately that's why I picked that um, college. Also because it was in LA and New York. I had aspirations to go to New York also. So did it eventually leave, lead you to New York going to AMDA or did something else eventually lead you to New York? I mean, yeah, technically it, it, it so my first big job right out of college, I got super fortunate. I was cast in the Los Angeles revival of Carrie the Musical. It was like the really immersive, really fun, cool. Did you hear of that one in the, yeah. when you were there? I, well, I didn't see it, but I know a lot of people who were in it. Oh. Uh, I interviewed Emily Lopez, who was- Oh, I love Karen Emily. Lopez. Emily and, Lopez is amazing. Yeah. She's, I'm, I'm the biggest fan of her. <laughs> She's fantastic. I, I was obsessed with uh, For the Record in California. Oh yeah, oh yeah, she's dynamite in that. Yes, exactly. But yeah, so I did Carrie and she was my Carrie and um, I had gotten that job I found out like maybe a month before I was graduating that like two days later after AMDA graduation, I would be starting rehearsals for Carrie, which is super cool. And ironically enough, when I was in horror genres class, which is a class we take our eighth semester in college where we study horror films and we analyze them, I was a bad student and I skipped class that day to go audition for Carrie the Musical. And I found out the film we were watching that day was Carrie the Musical. So super, super weird. Also my um, my senior showcase, I was assigned a song from Carrie the Musical. This is before I even auditioned. And our showcase choreographer ended up being the choreographer of Carrie without, so it was just a super like fortuitous the universe, the stars aligned. I was meant to do this, I think. And so technically, Yes, I got the job from college, but also it's the training I got from college. So that led me to do carry, which led me to get my equity card, which then prompted my move to go to New York. So a long winded story as to my move, but that's what happened. <laughs> so you were in carry, you got cast in carry before you even got your equity card, which says a lot, obviously. Yeah, I mean, when I auditioned for it, it was a non-union contract. I I didn't know what I was getting into. And then all of a sudden, the first run did so well. And it was like, oh, we have to revive this and do it well. We're going to give everyone their contracts. We potentially want to get it out to New York City. And it just turned into this big thing that I wasn't expecting. So it was super cool. And I felt like 
just like I said, the universe, I was at the right place at the right time. I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. And yeah, that second time we did the show, I got my card, which was amazing. And I'm so grateful for. <laughs> it definitely sounds like it was meant to be. So I've heard based on what Emily said about Carrie, it sounds like it was a very like special show. And the cast was like, it was super special as like a whole, the cast was a special cast and everything just like kind of fell in place perfectly. I mean, it got revived obviously because it was so popular. What do you think made it so special? I truly, there was a lot of factors. The cast was so awesome. I think we really were dedicated to that material. It was so real to us. I think the aspect of making it an immersive production, we had the original writer, one of the original writers of music, Dean Pitchford come in and rework and rewrite songs and pull things from the original and the, uh, the 2012 revival and just kind of make it tailored for us. So we were doing this new version of Carrie that was trying to you know, take away its bad name of being the show that was doomed on Broadway, which, for many reasons, I can see how it was, but also I just don't think the world was ready for that show at that time. There's a really awesome podcast out right now called Out for Blood, and it's all about the inception of Carrie the Musical, and I've been listening to that nonstop the past two weeks, so I love that we're talking about Carrie right now. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it didn't really get the hype that it deserved on Broadway yeah. or when it was out in New York, and I feel like maybe it's gonna come back and be revived maybe with maybe with that cast from oh that, that would be a dream come true honestly right I, mean, I, I any production of that show i just think it it's so timely i mean the themes of bullying in high school and uh, there, there's just oh, like what does it cost to be kind that theme i think is really relevant to today and i feel like audiences would be ready to see something like that again and for people who don't know or haven't seen LA theater, I feel like a lot of LA theater, at least a lot of LA theater I've seen is pretty immersive. Why is like the immersive thing so special and what makes the audience really connect to the immersive aspect of a show, do you think? It's like breaking that imaginary wall. I feel like as actors, our job is to suck the audience into the story. But when you're like, Hey, hey, you're right in my face, audience member. I think they're going to get the memo that, oh, yeah, I'm in this story. You know, I, yeah. I think that lends itself to just like the magic of theater, really bringing the audience in. And I feel like people are able to immerse themselves, immersive theater, in to the story better. And I think that's really important. I love that style of storytelling. Did you have specific moments in the show where you got to like talk to the audience? Uh, I didn't necessarily get to talk, but one time during the prom scene, uh, we were able to bring up audience members into the prom. And one night there was this beautiful woman sitting in the front row and I was like, hey, you come to prom with me. Let's dance. Yada, 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 yada. So we're doing our thing. We're dancing. And then as we're you know going upstage, one of the cast members whispers to me, you know, you just danced with Leona Lewis, right? I was like, what? And I look back and it was Leona Lewis. She had come to see Carrie and I was shook that I didn't recognize her, but I also just danced with the Leona Lewis. Uh, like what? What? Who went on to play uh, Grizabella and Cats in that revival? Like that's so cool. Oh. She was also a huge pop star before then, but like I, my mind was blown. So that was a cool imaginary uh, third yeah. wall broken moment. <laughs> Out of everyone you picked in, you picked in the audience or you saw in the audience, it was, it was her. It was Leona Lewis, great. <laughs> Wow. So I also noticed you have a lot of like my personal favorite roles on your resume you've played. So I want to talk about that before Mean Girls. Okay. What was your, what's been your favorite uh, show to be in? Oh, that's, scary. that's so hard. <laughs> I feel like every show is my favorite when I'm doing that show. Um, as you move on to the next projects, I think our job as actors is to make the show you're doing your favorite show it, it it's so real to you i you have to really trust the material and like the material or find a way to like the material for it to really transcend all uh, that being said i i always talk about i'll say i got to do my favorite musical of all time which is hair Ooh. the musical and i was able to play a role that i didn't think in a million years i would be cast in or playing but that ended up being my 
probably one of my favorite roles I've ever done because it was just such fun work to do something. I was like, oh, I'm not touching that. And I, I loved it. You got to cross it off your bucket list. For sure, for sure. I, I, I didn't think, I, it's, when I found out I cast that show, which was like two months before Mean Girls, I was like, okay, I'm ready re to retire. I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> I've done it all. I'm doing hair. Great. I can die happy now. <laughs> My dreams have come true. Everything Literally. That happened has ha everything good that's happened has happened. <laughs> that's truly how I felt. And it just goes to show you, it doesn't matter the magnitude of the production you're doing. It's it's just it's the production and the cast and the experience that makes it worthwhile. Because you could be doing a big budget production and be miserable you could be doing a small regional production and be the most happy it could be vice versa it just de it just depends on you know what you make of that experience it's like broadway and national tours are fantastic but also regional shows yes like, they go and, and, noticed and they're yeah i feel like you're able to hone in the work in the regional theater you're able to play more and have more um i would say have more artistic choices sometimes because when you step into a broadway show that's already done it's already set in place and you're stepping into the role adding your take but artistic choices probably have been a little bit more set and made and you get like the when you're doing regional shows in like the same city i feel like you have like the repeat audience members that come in that city because they're like oh i've seen him in a show before and i'm loved that his performance in this show so i want to see this show because yeah yeah <laughs> so i mean i know that that's the case for me in la yeah for sure so mean girls you were started mean girls before you were on mean girls tour for six months before all this happened mm -hmm. how did you get your audition for mean girls and what was the audition process like so i always draw it back to back in 2000 17 i was called in um out of the blue or i got an email from my agent saying mean girls uh lab dc out of town tryout um i had that was my i think like, that's the start of my journey with the show i had gone in for it it was a great i felt i had a great time with the material i ultimately ended up getting a call back and then another call back i ultimately didn't book that version of the show but that i was just like that's so cool to be brought in for this i was so grateful um, uh oh i just, I just dropped. <laughs> all good all right can you oh let me let me fix this great I think we're good now. Are we we're good? All good? Okay. <laughs> Boom, knocked it over. But um yeah. yeah, so 2017, I went in for it, didn't book it. Um, about two years later, after I finally went and saw the show in New York City, um I my best friend was in town. She loved Mean Girls. I hadn't seen it yet. We went to see it, and I was like, huh, man, this show is really great. I, I really could see myself doing the show. No kidding. The next day, I got an email from my agent saying, interest in auditioning for Aaron Samuels in Mean Girls National Tour. And my mind was blown. It, like I said, the universe, you're supposed to be where you're supposed to be when the universe, it lines up. So that was in like, I'd say, February of 2019. Wow. I had went in, they kind of remembered me for my initials in 2017. Got another call back, um, went back, everyone was there again, like Tina Fey, Casey Nicola, Casey Hushin, Mary Mitchell Campbell, the, most of the creative team was there. Okay. I, yeah, I talk about nerve wracking, you know, uh, I, yeah. we, 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 actors still have, ner like they get nervous and I, I am so guilty of that. And I, it's a matter how you channel that energy, right? Channel that nervous energy. But I had another call back with them didn't hear back for like a month, found out I had another call back. And then I had to wait three weeks, found out I had one more call back, which was supposed to be the final. I do the final call back, don't hear anything back. Um, I was like, oh, well, I probably didn't get the role, it went away. I get an email from my agent saying, final call back. So there was another final call back. At this point, you feel like they're just dangling yeah. it in front of you. You're so stressed, right? Um, I had this big trip planned. I was going to go to California to see friends and family yeah. out there. And it fell directly on my trip dates. So I was like, oh, what do I do? I mean, obviously I had to cancel my trip to California. And I'm glad I did because after that final callback, the following uh, few days later, I found out that I booked the role. 
So, wow. so it was like total of six or seven callbacks, including the initials in 2017. So it was a, it was a long process for me. <laughs> so when you're going in for that many auditions and for that many callbacks for just like one role, how do you, like you mentioned, there are nerves. How do you control those nerves and how do you prepare and like not psych yourself out when you see like Tina Fey sitting there in front of you in the casting room? I, I mean, you really have to humanize the people that you see. They're just human beings. Like I am a human being. That relatability of, I, I feel like, yes, you can give me a job, but also I'm here to collaborate and create. And there are mantras I would tell myself, like I'm doing this for every little black boy that wants to be a lead in musical theater or that can see themselves in me. Like, let me be your champion. Let me be your star. Let me be someone who um, can inspire you. And I think holding those thoughts in my mind were something that really got me through and just like leveled me down. Also, there was a, a, a technique I had a teacher tell me like, just picture everyone in the audition room naked. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, we're just, we're all here, right? <laughs> I, I don't think I did that one for that one, but that's a technique someone some people do just to like, okay, calm down. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, you're naked. Okay. <laughs> it, it could either work out extremely well or it could work out you're just like randomly laughing because you're like... Yes. It it could go I think for comedy shows it could work really well, but for a drama, I don't think you want a picture of naked. <laughs> when you're supposed to be like crying during the audition song, it's like Dear Evan Hansen or something and you're like uh -huh. You're like trying to be all serious. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> get the church giggles. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. So how does it feel to be like breaking barriers as an actor and inspiring a whole new generation as an actor? Because like you're cast in me, you're, you're on the tour, you're Aaron Samuels. People get to come see you on the tour mm -hmm. and like see someone on stage who is, is breaking barriers out there. It, you know, that's why we do what we do. I feel a theater is to inspire and to reflect the world we live in or to maybe change someone's life or just to help them go through a journey, navigate something that they're going through and be like, hey, you're not alone in this. I think that's why it's so important as an actor to do that work. I, I, I always try to look out in the audience at during every show during It Roars, the opening number, because that's like really my only chance where I can look into the audience until the end. And I try to be like, pick someone out like, hey, you, we're going to go on this together, you know, really make eye contact with just someone just briefly yeah. and do the show for them and check in and like, how are you feeling? You going through a journey like, yes, it's for the whole audience, but also I feel like for someone in particular, if I see someone out there that looks like me, younger version of me, you're you best believe I'm going to be your best friend during the show. <laughs> and, and audience members know when like, mm -hmm. like, I mean, maybe they think they're going crazy. Maybe they're like, oh, well, he's not looking at me. Like there's so many other people, but like they also get the feeling when when you all do that stuff and make those choices to like look at someone and make eye contact with someone. Like there's, a, there you know, at some point. Oh yeah, we're looking at you. Yes, <laughs> yes. So what was the reaction when you initially got the call that you booked the role? Yeah, so I had gone through a I my like my I believe my final callback was on a th Thursday or a Friday. So in the theater world, you rarely hear anything on a Saturday or Sunday. So I knew I had to go into this weekend being like, you know, what do I do? What do I do? At one point, my agent had called me and said that, you know, not to worry, they are not making any decisions till Monday. So that, but he says it sounds like a good sign. So that in, it, in itself was like, it, it calmed my nerves a little, but also made them worse because it's like, oh wait, what what if this happens when you're playing all these scenarios? But I, I know that Monday had arrived and I had gone to my day job, um, working at a dance studio, recording studio, um, just sitting there, you know, checking my emails every two minutes. Didn't hear anything till like five o'clock. I was not eating that day because I was just so nervous. Yeah. I finally went to, um, oh, here comes that train. <laughs> I apologize. Do you hear it? Yeah. <laughs> Is it That's super crazy. loud? <laughs> did, 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 did. Do you hear that all day? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really annoying when you have to make a self tape. Um, <laughs> 
I'm, I'm at my mom's house currently during uh, this pandemic because my mom moves into a house. So I've been helping her, but she lives right downtown, right by a train station. <laughs> so it's like, you're like in the middle of making a really good self tape and it's like, yeah, you're, you're like, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, that was my best yet. <laughs> yeah. I should compile like all of my self tape tame, uh, my train mishaps and just be like yep this happened this happened because i can tell you it's like every single time <laughs> in the blooper reel <laughs> yeah straight straight up i it doesn't matter what time of day you do i feel like hey he's making a self tape we better run through that's what yeah. the train conductor says it, i mean hey it would make you it would make you stand out if you like send a blooper reel to the to the casting people <laughs> along with like the along with the one that you I should do that. That's a good idea. I should do that. It just humanizes me a little. Um, <laughs> okay, I think it's died down just a little bit. But as I was saying, it, Monday arrives around. I have an eight. I decided to go to Westerly Market, which is like my favorite like grocery store in New York City. Got me a sandwich, took the train home. All right, I was like, fine, I'm going to eat. I haven't heard anything. Kind of bummed. I go to the bathroom to wash my hands to eat i go back out check my phone i had a missed call from my agent the one minute i like didn't have my phone on me yeah. and i was about to eat and i was like oh my agent called me they left me a voicemail they're like hey adante can you please give us a call back craig's number blah 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 giving my, my agent's name is craig yeah. so i call the office i'm like hi this is adante uh craig just called me I'm like oh hi adante um craig is actually busy at the moment would you mind holding and i'm like Yep, I I don't mind holding. Don't so do, 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 you know, two minutes passes. Literally phone tag. Right, right. So I um get through to my agent finally, and um my agent's like, uh, how are you today? You know, small talk, and I'm like, he's like, well, how would you like to play Aaron Samuels in Mean Girls? And I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't believe, I was physically shaking I mean, my knees were wobbling i was weak you know i i i, I couldn't believe it and i was like are you kidding me i'd love to so that after waiting and waiting and waiting my agent called um i don't think i ate that sandwich because i was in such shock that i didn't eat for like a day and a half which probably wasn't the most healthy thing but I, my body was just so so shaken by that because I was just so excited, so nervous, just so many things, so many emotions I felt that I physically couldn't eat. <laughs> hey, and it happens with the excitement and with the anxiety and like even with good anxiety, it happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eat your food, people. If you find out goodness, eat your food. But it, it happens. It happens. And I totally understand. And I, I, um, I, you know, I wouldn't, I remember that experience so viscerally and I wouldn't change my experience with that ever it's funny because a lot of people tell like that the stories of when like their agent tells them that they got a role and they like start off with like so how's your day going blah blah, blah. is it is that like the normal thing like they just like like to like kind of drag it on and like tease you a little before they drop the news I, I feel like I feel like that's that's just like Asian code nowadays that like we have to do this. There's like a they all have secret meetings like anytime you get a booking, we have to just like taunt our clients. <laughs> just drag it out, make it a little more exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't just like let them hear it right away, right? We have to yeah, let yeah. them wallow in agony just a little bit more. <laughs> so you obviously you auditioned for Tina Fey. Have you gotten to work alongside Tina Fey and like meet her? And what was that like? Yeah, Tina Fey was actually there, uh, you know, on most of the audition process. But she, when we had our first um, rehearsal, we all were in a big huddle. And I look over and Tina Fey's just in our big group huddle, you know, talking with us, talking about the production. Lauren Michaels was there. There was, um, Jeff Richman, Nell Benjamin, Casey Nicola, Casey, everyone yeah. like that's involved with Mean Girls was there. So it was cool to see her there. And she was just so funny in that meeting. And then throughout the rehearsal process, she was there the most of the time. And she, they knew that they for the tour, they wanted to make some changes and to tighten the show up and clean it up just a little bit. So she was actively giving us rewrites or edits and 
I know at one point the question came up of like uh, the sexy with his hair pushed back line, like what will do for me or um, so we were kind of tiptoeing like what are we going to do with that and then one day Tina Fey came up to Danny and I who's our Katie and was like hey I have these uh, rewrites for you do you want to take a look at them what you think and Tina Fey looked at me and she said what color are your eyes and I was like <laughs> Uh, 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 I, don't know. I don't know. I don't have eyeballs. What? what? <laughs> um, I said they're g g green. <laughs> she said, hmm, interesting. Okay. And then she left. And the next day she had a rewrite of the tour version of, hey, Katie, what color are Aaron's eyes? Are they green or are they gray? And that was the rewrite for that line for me. And oh. Tina Fey specifically wrote that for me, which I think is so cool right uh, wow. just the nicest thing to do to really personalize the role for us yeah had you seen the movie before because i know it's like i don't know if is it as big for guys as it is, as it is for girls because like i know i saw it when i was like in sixth grade and my mom was like why is my daughter at this movie in sixth grade <laughs> i yeah i i saw that movie when i was like in fourth or fifth grade when it like was coming out and i loved that movie i have the dvd still the the case of the dvd is missing i don't know what happened to it the dvd is all scratched up because i had played it so many times and i had brought it so many places it was like oh my gosh is this what high school is going to be like oh i have to get ready for high school you know we you, you expect high school to be like the movies high school is nothing like the movies so just just know that there's a glamorized meaner version of high school but yeah i had loved the movie knew most of the quotes from it. I, I I would have never in a million years thought I would be in it, essentially, in the musical version of it. So yes, to answer your question, I loved that movie. And I had saw it probably a hundred times, maybe. Yes, yes. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan stands. Okay. Yes, Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> oh my goodness, I had birthday parties too. For like her movies when her movies came out i was I, confessions of a teenage drama queen yes. i that's a freaky friday i think i watched freaky friday more i loved freaky friday oh my god i mean that one it's still like a classic yeah and it's still relevant and it's it just aged very well all of them all of them mm -hmm. so i mean obviously rehearsal process for the tour was pretty cool because like you all even though it was on Broadway before, you all are basically rehearsing for a brand new show because you're taking mm -hmm. it out on the road for the first time. How does that like help with the bond of the cast and the chemistry that the cast has on stage for the audience to see when you take it out on the road? Yeah, it's that, it's that sense of collaboration and creation. Everyone in the cast is just honestly so nice and we get along great. I couldn't ask for a better experience with cast members. Everyone's so professional and kind and prompt and prepared. Uh, I, I really enjoy, you know, working with Casey and the um, rewrites of the scenes because we got one-on-one -on -one scene time and I was able to work with Danny. Um, I was able to sit with Mariah, who's our Regina, and just watch the rehearsal process with her and, you know, get to know her in the hallway. It, it, that's a lot of the special moments in the bonding happen then. Also, when we get on stage, just seeing them transform into this new character is just so magical. And it's like, obviously, I feel like if you're, like recast like in the Broadway show, then it's like you're rehearsing by yourself. It's a little more lonely. So like you're rehearsing yeah. with a group of people and like that makes it even more fun probably as an actor. Yeah, that that's so true. You know, you get, you find out the book, so you're replacing someone on Broadway. You're just working one-on-one -on -one basically with the associate. And then you have a put-in rehearsal with main cast and then you're on and you're like, hi everyone, I'm the new kid. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's super <laughs> weird. <laughs> like, tell me what to do, I don't know right right we didn't we didn't have um any we didn't feel everyone felt like a new kid that day it honestly felt like the first day of freshman year in high school it really was that nerve-wracking for me but i i enjoyed the experience so much and i think it's so special with these tours now they they are changing them from the broadway version of the show and they're mm -hmm. making them new they're making them like something that like even if you've seen the show on broadway like it's a different show if you're seeing it out on tour it's a completely different show they're adding songs they're replacing songs with other with new songs it's like it's new so that's exciting too 
Yeah, it, it, it's like anything that they didn't get time to do before opening on Broadway, they were able to fix with the tours. You know, Wicked has gone through many rewrites. You remember Adam's Family infamously had a huge rewrite. They just like to, like, this is our one last chance before we send it out to really make things not quote unquote right, but just change things up um, and add new jokes or take away things to really tighten up the show. So during the rehearsal process, how did you, how did you make Aaron Samuels your own? And how did you like make him different than he's been portrayed in the movie or on Broadway previously? Yeah, I truly, I had stopped. Um, I had watched the movie like during the process, maybe once back in like 2017. But after that, I let it go. I didn't want um, Jonathan Bennett's um, Aaron like uh, inflections or anything like that. And then Kyle's, I saw Kyle who was amazing like three times on Broadway do it. So I had a general idea of what the Broadway character was like, but I, I really wanted to make it fresh in my own and just like how I, Adante, would say the lines or approach the character is how I approach the character, except my name just happens to be Aaron Samuels. So I really made it my own, or it was just me, essentially. I wanted also to approach it. I love like indie films or like Juno, like, have you seen Juno before? Diablo Cody, she wrote that. She wrote Little Miss Sunshine as well. Uh oh, are we cutting out? I think I froze. Are we back? We good? Yeah, it's, it's back. All right, cool. I, I wanted to approach him in more of like a, I don't know, an indie film manner. Someone you would see in like those to that late 2000s indie films, the really angsty high schooly. I just felt like that was more of the approach I wanted to go with him in. Because I always thought those people were so cool. So that was my idolization of cool. So let me just not play cool but just let me be in that world because it works really well for mean girls and what are my uh what katie and regina were giving i was like oh i think this vibes well and the special thing about like live theater is that people are expecting different people it's a different mm -hmm. medium than the movie it's different mm -hmm. it's different than the, than the broadway version people want different people want to see someone like make the characters that they love their own yeah. characters and bring themselves to it yeah, they don't want to see impersonations or else they just watch the movie. So yeah. I, my job was not to impersonate anyone. <laughs> so how cool is it being able to take Mean Girls out on tour and out on the road for people who might necess not necessarily get to go to New York and have the means to travel to New York or travel to Broadway? I I love it. I love the change in energy like every other week or every other five weeks or however long we have to sit down it's just we knowing that we, we get to go to a new venue and to a new market and a new audience um i think regional tours or uh, national tours are really important because that's what i grew up watching i never i didn't make it out to new york until i was like a senior in high school so my experience with theater was seeing some of these national tours come through and that was super inspiring. So I don't know if I'd be performing if I hadn't gone to those productions. And I think it's really cool to inspire that next wave of performers that are considering doing it, but haven't yet made it to New York. And I'm sure there's been multiple people who have been sitting in the audience for Mean Girls and who have seen you performed who are like, oh, well, maybe it's not only for people like in New York and in New York City, like maybe I could do it too. I can find my like, a theater close by and like start and like take classes close yeah by and be on the road and be on broadway and i love I, any way you can get involved like that's what's most important or just to do what you even if it's just singing in your closet for you know to musical theater tracks which i definitely did not do <laughs> but, <laughs> never. Yeah, yeah. never did that never did that never acted out on my own from lame is never nope didn't didn't do that <laughs> yeah theater kids don't do that what are you talking about yeah yeah <laughs> but go ahead go ahead i was gonna say i don't sing in the shower no 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 i, I don't sound the best i've ever sounded in the shower ever <laughs> mm, i sound like i i sound like i'm on key in the shower like it's fantastic i know isn't that it's i think broadway stages should just be like showers right <laughs> everyone would just be adina menzel in the shower <laughs> i'm picturing it i'm picturing it now just like little showers <laughs> like, <laughs> maybe that's a new wave of theater with this pandemic it's like little showers placed <laughs> instead of like bubbles little showers 
Perfect. I, I perfect. Think she just came up with the new with the new post pandemic idea for right for all all. <laughs> So have you had any like favorite stage door memory thus far with Mean Girls? Because like, I feel like the stage door for Mean Girls is probably insane nightly or was insane nightly pre everything happening with COVID. Yeah, I honestly was not expecting it to be as crazy as it was. And it was crazy. And I, I, I am just so grateful for the people that do come to stage door because you took spent money and you took the time out of your day to come see us so it's just so grateful you know to express my gratitude on top of you know hearing their excitement for the show i really loved that i love getting um there was this trend going for a while word got out that i loved pink starbursts so oh. people were bringing me pink starbursts at this stage door so i have a plethora to this day a pink starburst that i still munch on um so that was just really cool for all the fans and all the people that brought starburst to the, starburst to the stage door thank you so much i'm still eating those <laughs> oh my goodness that's amazing how many did you get like hundreds <laughs> thousands probably it, oh. just like big bags of them and i would just put them backstage for the cast i had this ritual that every time before i would sing um before october 3rd that yes. scene i would consume a pink starburst that was just my ritual and that got word got out and now i was just bathing in pink starburst backstage <laughs> Speaking of the scenes in Mean Girls, what's your favorite scene in Mean Girls? Because I mean, there's so many iconic moments. And I mean, even for people who haven't like seen the musical yet, I mean, I feel like the iconic moments probably transfer from movie to stage. So. Oh, I mean, there's, I, I love each one for its own reasons. Um, I, I mean, one of the scenes that I love that I, I am quote unquote in i'm walking across the stage it really is what happens um i love when um janice and damien who are just brilliant in our show uh find out that katie had a party without them and um, mk sings the reprise of uh someone gets hurt the it's fine part and i just love that part just stand in the wings right as i exit i turn right around and i watch because it's just so cool <laughs> You're like, so I, I love that scene. And listen to this? <laughs> right, right. The stakes are so high in that. It's just such juicy, good musical theater where the emotions and the stakes are so high. I can't say I got to sing it, which yes. I love. And she delivers it so beautifully. And you get to listen to like multiple people in the show sing these songs every night and be like, oh, wow, I'm in a, like this cast is something special. Like everyone's so it, talented. It truly, it truly is. Uh, I, I, I can't wait till we get back and we have that first moment of good morning welcome to north shore high like that yeah. that is just i feel like we're gonna it's gonna be so emotional for all of us and the audience i can already picture it it's it's just gonna be like we're back it, I, I can't wait <laughs> there's gonna be like a 10 minute standing ovation that you all need to be i for. hope i hope so because they deserve it the cast deserves it the world deserves it it's like mean girls we're, we're ready to come back <laughs> and i have to ask do you have a favorite line from Mean girls um again one of my favorite lines in the show necessarily not mine and necessarily not a line it's when mariah regina finds out that the calteen bars have make, been making her gain weight and she lets out this scream that is just the best and she kills it every night and then there's a second scream they all let you in on a little secret it's pre-recorded but it's so consistent every night that i I die backstage. I love it so much that someone in the cast member, um, someone in the cast bought me a monkey that when you press its arm, it's it screams Mariah's scream. It's her scream is recorded into that monkey. And I love it so much. That's how much I love that moment. <laughs> You've just like been playing it for like for like the past year on I know, I know. I, I gotta I gotta get him out. He's actually at my grandparents' house, but oh, no. I because I don't want it to die. I don't want the scream to go away ever. <laughs> oh, so you haven't been playing you're like, I need it back so I could just I, like, Oh, I, I, every time I go out to my grandparents, I'm like, do you a little squeeze? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, what is that? They're like, you literally, my cats are like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Please, can you not? <laughs> yeah. So, do you have, what city are you most looking forward to going to on tour once the tour resumes? 
honestly, Los Angeles. I just want to get back to LA. Uh, I like I uh, you worked at the Pantages yes. and I am just right down the street. I would go to the Pantages to see all the national tours when they would come through. So it's just going to be full circle, bittersweet moment to be performing right down for my college. I know originally we were planned to perform at the Dolby, but now it's switched over to Pantages. So yes. I, I truly can't wait. I really want to experience LA as a working actor again. I, I think the Pantages choice, I was, it's like much, a much better place for Mean Girls, honestly. Like, yeah, I, I, I've never performed there. So I, I don't know what to expect. I've been there. Uh, and I'm sure you've seen yeah. many amazing shows there. Being an usher is such a good gig there. I wish I would have done that in college. <laughs> yes, it's, it's a blast. I had actually just started before last October. So like, I didn't get oh, the wow. full swing, but mm -hmm. like it was- Which which shows did you see? Uh, Anastasia. Ooh, Robin, awesome. And Jesus Christ Superstar. Um, what else did I see? I saw a lot of Frozen. Yeah, Frozen, I bet was, that's where it, it opened up there, didn't it, or? I, it had its official opening night there and it had previews in a uh, city in New York. Oh yeah, probably like Chinook yeah. Kitty or something like Not that. that. <laughs> I can't say yeah. it. I can't. I, neither can I, it's it's, it's terrible. Like, <laughs> like why, why is it even named that if people can't pronounce it? I don't, I don't get it, I don't get it. We'll call it S-Town, that's what we'll call S -Town. it. S-Town, yep. Perfect, perfect. <laughs> So how would you convince people to come see Mean Girls on tour when it when the tour does reopen? I think that the world and you, audience members, you're just ready for a big old laugh at how ridiculous this past heinous train wreck of a year has been, right? We need to experience that joy and we're going to bring you joy and we're going to bring you laughter and tears and happiness and if you want to experience all that in one night come to Mean Girls the Musical because we are ready to give that to you and we are ready to receive that from you. Yes love it I cannot wait for people to get to see it on tour who haven't gotten to see it yet and I cannot wait to personally see it on tour. <laughs> What's your dream role on stage currently? Ooh. It changes every day. <laughs> um, right now, I am into, I just discovered the Anne Juliet soundtrack, Ooh. which is so good. It's in the West End right now. Um, it's like all the music I grew up with, like 90s boy bands and Britney Spears and those pop songs. <laughs> Sign me up. It, it, it's just like that paired with Shakespeare. It's the second part of Romeo and Juliet if uh, I think if Juliet had not died. So it's just super cool. I, that'd be a fun show I'd like to be in. I'm also into Prince of Egypt right now currently. Weston is killing it. Like, like yeah, I, yeah. They I've have some good stuff coming out. I've never been to London and I'm like dying to go see theater in London. Same, so, same. <laughs> hopefully eventually. If you could revive any musical and be in it, what would it be? Revive any musical and be in it. Okay, right now, the show that I want to revive the most and be in the most is You're in Town. Ooh. It is so relevant to right now. Like, it's scary that I think it's just due for a revival. Um, I, I was able to do the show uh, many, many years ago, but I think it's now I would just be really ready to dive into that material and give the world a comedy meets, like these are the circumstances we're living in. Yes. I was gonna say, I also totally miss on your resume and mm -hmm. I would, I feel like you'd be really good in that role and I would love to see you at, in Les Mis. Oh, I would I would love to do Les Mis again. I, that's oh. that's right up my alley type of shows because there's not a lot of dancing in it. <laughs> I mean, speaking of that, how do you how have you become like such a well-rounded performer? Because like I feel like you do have to have to have some dance experience for Mean Girls, and there's there is like a lot of dance in Mean Girls. I don't know how much you're doing, but you still have to like for auditions. You have to like kind of be prepared with the dancing. Yeah, I, you know, in college I had dance training. Um, I would never personally first go to a dance call, but we have to do it, right? And I think a matter of it, a lot of it is me talking myself down, being like, it's okay, it's just a dance, it's just dance, it's not rocket science. 
and just having fun and showing character and really shining through the work um just get through it like i stress myself out too much about it and i think that it, it, it just have fun with it and that's the approach especially what i'm learning now with this time off is to just have fun with the work enjoy it while it lasts and while it's here and i think that's something to carry through all these people that are wondering how do i do this how do i do this so it's, remember at the end of the day it's just musical theater it's not rocket science you yeah. can do it you can do it have fun be you so if like someone's listening and that they're maybe good at one thing that involves musical theater but like they're trying to work on becoming better at the at the other thing what advice would you like give them to help them grow their confidence and like trust that they're able to take up everything in musical theater yeah so the biggest thing i'd say is again be you you is what's going to get the work yourself and your energy and your personality is what's going to get you the job no one can sing like you no one can dance like you no one can act like you so carrying that in and making it authentic and true is what makes you stand out and people are going to love it some people are going to say no but that doesn't mean that it's it, it's game over someone will have confidence and will believe in you and that's what's with you believing in yourself and believing in your authenticity i love that it's so that's so well said and i feel like everyone needs that self-confidence talk like that exact kind of self-confidence i need talk. to tell myself that all, still it's easier said than done right i, I need is. to he, remind myself oh okay like it, i said it's not rocket science <laughs> yeah it is we're our own worst enemy and we're we <laughs> over critique ourselves so it's it's a struggle it's a struggle what's the funniest thing that's ever happened to you while you've been on stage in a show any show yeah in Mean Girls in particular, or? Any show. I'll, I'll go with Mean Girls, because I, right off the top of my head, it was like, boop, you said that. Oh, I know what happened. Um, some people may or may not know that after my first scene with Katie and Stupid with Love, we have this little desk turn, and we file out backwards in our desks. Um, so one night i turned my desk i scooted it back and i swooped to the side but my foot got caught and i went bloop, tipped right over in my desk like straight up tipped over ah! and the audience went oh <laughs> and it was kind of in a blackout and i was trapped in my desk because it was one of those old school desks that have the side and i couldn't get out so i'm trying to like get up and struggle to get out. Meanwhile, Damien and Janice are on stage and they're kind of like, what it, What a hot train wreck is going on. And I think they kind of used that. And I was like, oh, there's, there's no, I'm supposed to be the cool guy. There's no way I'm coming back from this. So that rest of that show, I, I try to be as cool as possible. <laughs> That's amazing because then the audience members like, I mean, when something like that happens, the audience members are like, guess what? I got to see like a completely different show. Like, everything <laughs> yeah, they did. So, I mean, like that makes them feel special that night in a way. To yeah, I, I go to theater. Those moments we have in theater, those are just the best. Because it shows that people are real human beings. But let me tell you, that moment felt like it was 10 minutes in my head when it was probably like five seconds. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm sure, I'm sure it felt like it was like the length of the show. By the time. <laughs> You're like, Basically. <laughs> I was like, I'm, 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 I'm done for the night. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm good. I, I think it was the day following October 3rd. So after coming out from an amazing October 3rd Mean Girls show, I fall over in my desk. <laughs> amazing, amazing. What city was that in? Minneapolis. Ooh. I think the line, in, in, and on October 4th, Aaron fell out of his desk. <laughs> yes. Uh, hopefully that's a new line in the show. Hopefully the toy resumes by October 4th. <laughs> I would have loved if they said that or something. <laughs> if the show like resumes on October 4th, you like some someone has to add that. <laughs> has to, has to. So what are you most excited about when theater can come back safely? Just spending time and with and making eye contact with each other, all of my cast members on stage and really savoring the moment to be doing what we love to be doing, which is performing. Uh, we'll just be so grateful. I'm, I'm excited to tour again. I'm excited to uh, experience the audience energy again. That's just a big part. It's, it really fuels you. Um, 
to inspire, to create, to just be artistically fulfilled in the capacity that I was a year and some change ago. Yes. How have you been like getting through this past year and like stay and like, I mean, have you been doing anything that involves your craft? Do you have anything to promote? Uh, do you have anything that you've been doing, whether it doesn't involve singing? Yeah, I, I have taken some time off, but then I started, uh, I do teach now, um, virtual like master classes, workshops. I'm on Broadway Plus and Artists and Beyond, but I also teach locally, um, virtually. And out of the blue, I got that random gig to do the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade for Mean yeah. Girls and the Best of Broadway special. So that was just a super amazing experience and nice surprise out of 2020 being a terrible year. Um, right now, currently, I just got done recording audio. So there's this new app called Clubhouse, yeah. and they're doing musicals on it. I um, going I'm going to be one of the musicals on there I'm doing once on this island I'm gonna be playing Daniel in it so I excited to do that show on Clubhouse and just sing that material so that's just something a little fun project I get to do so if you have Clubhouse check it out once on this island I think it's like April 1st or 2nd wow that's amazing and I'll put the links to where people can find you on the Broadway websites for master classes and everything yeah that'd be great <laughs> so how I have to ask before we end this how was it filming that Macy's Day Parade, Thanksgiving Parade, because like that's iconic. Everybody it was for me, the, the experience first off was nerve wracking because I, to be honest, I hadn't really sang a bunch before finding that out because I was like, oh, we're not coming back till January. At that point, it was yeah. January. And I kind of just was taking time to relax, rest my voice. And then I found I was like, oh, I got to I got to do this. And I'm not doing with my normal cast. I'm doing with Renee Rapp, who yeah. is just Dynamite is amazing, so sweet, so kind. She made it such a comfortable experience. And then all the Broadway uh, cast member, the boys, they were so nice and I felt welcome because it was that feeling of being put in, not knowing the cast being put in, the new yeah. kid being put in. And they made it so amazing. And then once I saw, after that rehearsal, I saw Danny. It was that sense of reunion. Oh. And I saw MK and we were able to um, just, you know, experience our normal lives again which was yeah. awesome so i was so grateful for that moment but it was nerve-wracking but also i never would have thought i would have been making my, my macy's thanksgiving day parade debut in the middle of a pandemic mm -hmm. how cool to say that, that you got to not only make it but like under the circumstances that this past year has put everyone through to get to do that and to get to bring theater back in that way to people who miss it as much as as much as the performers, as much as everyone else in this world. Yeah, just to inspire, to get people, theaters coming back. Don't just hang in there. We're going to be back. Get your tickets, get ready, save that money so you can buy all the tickets because we're ready for you. <laughs> yes. So where can people follow you on social media to keep up with what you're doing and your bright future ahead of you? Um, honestly, I use most Instagram. I haven't been really active lately, but um, Instagram at Adante Carter, my name. Um, I have a Twitter that I haven't used since like 2014. So don't use that. I have it. I should probably delete that actually. But um, I'm not I'm not a Twitter dude. So Instagram. Great. Great. Yes. Instagram is the best. Twitter, Twitter is like crazy. <laughs> and, and I got a TikTok and I'm, I, I, it's too confusing for me. I, I did one TikTok and I was like, I, I think I'm too old for this. Hey. <laughs> it's so confusing. Hey, but people are like doing the next like Broadway musicals on TikTok. I know I got to get a grip. I got to get a handle on it. I, I think I got to invest my next summer on to learning the ins and outs of TikToks. And by the time I do that, something new will be out. But Clubhouse, hey, if you have Clubhouse, that's a good app for people. I'm on there. Follow me on there because I am going to be doing a few projects. Ooh, okay. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming on and talking to me on this on my show today. Oh, thank you for having me. Thanks for watching this episode of Backstage with Becca B. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Becca B Talks TV. Or for more exclusive content from this interview and more, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Backstage with Becca B. Make sure to subscribe to my channel and like this video, or if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, go ahead and give me a five-star rating. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!